now now to like actually get on task. Uh, oh, thank you, Vodka Vision, and and good luck on your your biology program. I I biology is one of those things. It's it's it can be so magical and so wonderful, and the the like the possibilities are truly endless. But really, to be a good biologist, you just have to be okay with failure and like be able to embrace the suck without it breaking you. And like, I was, I was just talking with a friend today about, um, you know, there's, there's lots of people who will start a bio degree and they'll be like, yeah, I can do this. It's going to be great. And I'm going to do a PhD. And then like they get in the lab and they realize just how often things fail. And like some people just don't have the constitution for it. It's like, it's, it's not a, a negative to them. It's just fucking hard. And like, well, having a thing fail for like six months to three years to ten years, depending on what you're working on, is really demotivating, and it can be very, very hard to like stay on task and just like get your shit done. Um, but when it works, it, I mean, there's nothing compares. Anyway, so talking about caffeine, here's the caffeine synthesis pathway. Um, so if I'm seeing GMP, I would assume that this is some weird linear fuckery, and then it gets like cyclized into this. Um, also, I get, I get questions a lot about, like, what's the what's the best way to get started learning bio, uh, like, book-wise and stuff? And the, the thing I always say is just learn as much organic chemistry as you can cram into your face. Like, it's all... Because bio is just organic chemistry, but with all the rules thrown out. <laughs> like, all these all the, like, reactions that you learn in OCHEM, you're like, and yes, you can do this sort of esterization and do this and that. None of that matters in bio. Like, it's... You throw enzymes at it. It just does weird shit. And, like, the, the routes that you take... To, like, if you were going to try and make caffeine synthetically, um, like, you would not take this route. Like, this is a ridiculous route to, to take, and it only makes sense from, like, a biological perspective where you have enzymes that will, like, do these steps and precursors that make sense. Whereas, like, trying to do this in a flask, you'd start with something with, like, cyanide hanging off of it and just, like, schmoo the two pieces together. Um <laughs> 10 years of failure how does anyone keep trying you got to pick a really exciting project <laughs> or or more accurately you're the pi and you have graduate students to do that shit for you um but also yeah you just need to be incredibly stubborn like you you it, it, this is one of those like you're trying to bend the rules of nature to your whim you kind of have to just like it i'm a huge i'm a huge weeb so like in so like avatar like the, the like airbender um they're talking about like earth bending like the only way you can bend a rock is you must be more firm like more stable than the rock this is basically what you got to be with bio you just have to be more s like steadfast in your desire to do the thing than the stupid bacteria is to not do the thing <laughs> um cool so caffeine this is how you make caffeine or this is how the make a plant makes caffeine um, and you'll notice that theobromin, which is like chocolate, um, is what's turned into caffeine. And so by the looks of it, they just like, everybody loves me. So everybody loves some, some dangly bits. Um, you add a dangly bit. Um, it's, it's just a, it's just a methyl group. Um, so really all we got to do is not like, we don't need to touch any of this other shit. All of this is important. Like this is ribose. Like the, you don't want to, or there's like a ribose hanging off of there. Like, there's, there's all kinds of stuff. All this stuff looks important. I don't want to break it. I just want to break this one thing. Um, I missed a... It says, you missed a Super Chat question. Did I? I didn't... I mean, I'm a huge... Like, my... my I am a huge weeb. My, like... If anyone's like, what do you... Like, what cooking show do you like? I'm like, Shokugeki no Soma. I'm a huge weep. I like. I'm. I'm fine with that. Um. Anyway. Um. So really, all we gotta do is just break this one enzyme, and it should just end up with chocolatey coffee, which sounds kind of cool. Oh, thank you, person whose name I can't pronounce because it's in Cyrillic. I you you donate all the time. I I appreciate you, but also I can't pronounce your name. I just, I should endeavor to learn your name so I can actually thank you properly. Um, so, so biology is like life bending. Yeah, kinda. I mean, <laughs> um, uh, 
So will the beans be more chocolatey? I don't actually know because like chocolate is a really complicated flavor. Like, so I looked this up. One of the suggestions that was in the hat or was going to go in the hat originally was um, chocolate milk cows. Um, and I was like, okay, how difficult is a chocolate milk cow? So I looked this up because I, I vet all the ideas before I put them in. Um, and yeah, chocolate's really hard. Chocolate's like 400 compounds all coming together to actually give you something that tastes like chocolate. Theobromin is one of the main constituents, but like, I mean, that's like saying that like lactose is one of the main constituents of milk. If I just gave you a glass of lactose, it would not be anything like milk. Um, so. Oh, I missed a, I missed a Streamlabs question. Oh, I didn't, I didn't see it go by. Um, let me just have a, have a quick little look-see. Um, okay, so broken, so just to go back, it says, Broken Bits, are you going to provide an outlet for viewers to get some of your spider silk yeast similar, similar to what you're planning for milk and eggs? Yes, 100%. Um, the whole, literally the whole reason that I'm doing the spider silk project, other than it's awesome and it's something that, oh, oh his name is pronounced Peter. Okay, well, thank you, Peter. Um, um, so, anyways, uh, as to as to the um, making the, the silk available, yeah, hundred percent. Like one of the reasons that I'm even doing this, and I'm I'm doing this in the way that I'm doing this, um, is because I want people to be able to play with spider silk. Like it is such a cool protein. I I think it's ridiculous that the only people who ever get to play with it are traditionally like companies that are trying to mass produce it. Like I would love if it was something that people could just play with and it was it was the, it, like in the same way that like people make like gfp yeast i would love it if people were making like silk yeast like that's just i love that so yes it will be available once it's done that's also the other reason i want to just get it done so i can actually start making it available to people and people can start playing with it and experimenting with it and improving it and then like we can collaborate and do all kinds of cool shit i'm excited um <laughs> how do you donate to the silk project just just donate <laughs> like all the donations either go to like bio supplies or food. I don't I don't do anything else. <laughs> like just it's just supporting supporting me generally gets these things done. Um oh, Well, thank you, Sven. Okay, cool. So let's figure out what this enzyme is so we can figure out how to break it. Um but it boop boo do doop boop boo. What do we got? Um, so we, I saw an accession number or, or some sort of identifier number on one of these and my computer froze again. Wonderful. Um, when is the update for the lactose intolerance? Um, I keep trying to make the video. The video is filmed. The script is written. I just hate it. So the only reason the, the lactose update hasn't come out at this point is literally just because... I, I can't seem to will myself to make it. Like, I just, I hate the script. And the, and I, I'm, like, waffling on how I want to present it. And so I just, I can't seem to quite will myself to do it. But I've set myself uh, a limit of it has to be out this week. I'm not letting myself go any further. I'm going to just suck it up and do it. Get it done. Fucking video is going to be out this week. Because I, I wanted to have it out before the end of April. I just, I just couldn't. I just, I tried real hard. I just, I couldn't make it work. Um, uh, okay. Anyways. Um, here, let's see. I mean, see, this one's got a, this one's got a number on it. Caffeine synthase. See, that's what we want. That's, that's. I mean, it, can't, it comes with a number, too? Very exciting. EC 2.1.1. Did I, do I have an extra one in there? No, that's right. Um, this should be caffeine synthase, which we need to break. Thank you, real bro code, bro. Uh, what happened to the kombucha leather? Um, I mean, nothing really. I mostly got bored of it. <laughs> um, 
Do I want to go mRNA or do I want to go? Let's just let's see what NCBI I got. Uh, oh, Mizuno Mark, thank you very much. This is first off, I'd choose water bending if possible. Secondly, anime is dope. I'm watching all the shows. Thirdly, keep being awesome. Thank you for your content. Well, thank you. Greatly appreciate it. Um, okay, what do we got here? Um, I really just need like a... From tea leaves? Wait, let's just see if we can work backwards here. So let's go Uniprot. Um... I really, I want to, what I'm, so what I'm doing right now is I'm, I just want to find the enzyme from the actual coffee plant. Like, I don't want to, because caffeine has uh, evolved independently multiple times, which is I find fascinating. So, like, you'd think that, like, all the plants that make caffeine all came from the same family. No, they all, they all made the thing totally independently as a way to fend off insects. Um, so, you can't, like, target the, the caffeine synthase from one plant and expect it to hit the other plant it really needs to be from coffee arabica that's the thing i want so ccs1 awesome um somebody's asking about like have i seen some new anime honestly the the only the only new anime that i've watched in recent memory um, like I, I've, you know, I'm, I'm staying up to date on Shokugeki, although the new episode is taking way the fuck too long to come out. Um, the, the only like new anime I've watched in a while was Dr. Stone. Um, and that was dope. Um, like it, that show, like it took me a little while to get into it because I, I was, I, I kept thinking like, there's no way, like there's, there's definitely certain things about that show that like, what's, what's the best way to put this? Um, if I were Ishigami Senku, I could have done it better. Um, but at the same time, I'm consistently impressed with um, the the like ingenuity of the ways that they come up with to um, uh, like make things. That every time they're like, and this is how you make that thing. I'm like, I mean, is that really? And then I look it up. I'm like, oh, no, you totally could do it that way. Um, will the spider silk have the same microstructure as the original? No, it will not. Um, the weird silk that I made is not natural. It is a weird mix of, like, silk of multiple species and multiple different types of silk. And it's all, like, carefully randomized. And it's it's all very weird. I have no idea what its properties are going to be like. I just needed something to start with. Okay, how am I going to go about finding family domain database? I really just, I really would love the, just the gene for the, like the actual NCBI reference. That would be wonderful. Oh, what is this? What do you know? Oh. Is this? Oh, shit. This is, <laughs> this is just the whole species. That's not helpful. Is that any... What was that noise? Um, hmm. This is the problem. Like, the one problem with Uniprot is, for whatever reason, getting to the DNA from Uniprot is very frustrating. Okay, so I think the way that I'm going to do this is entirely stupid, but we're going with it, um, is we're just going to blast this. We're gonna we're gonna just we're gonna just work backwards. Okay, so I'm gonna use a tool called Blast, um, which sounds awesome but mostly sucks. Um, that basically you can either put in amino acids or RNA or DNA and basically search their database for stuff. Um, so we're going to do protein blast, and we're going to do like a reverse translate blast thing, because all I have is the amino sequence. Um, uh, coffee Arabica. So I'm basically giving it, I'm like, 
this is the protein, this is the species, find me some DNA that makes these two now kiss, basically. Uh, the weird silk is not patented, though? Yes, that is explicitly the point. I love copyleft, um, which is the opposite of copyright. It's, it's basically releasing things to the public. I love this shit. Um, I, I get, you know, I, people, people will, will ask me, like, well, you know, why don't you, why don't you just get a patent and then commercialize it? Because that's not my jam. I want people to be able to play with my toys. I don't want, I don't want to just hoard them. Um, uh, would you sell your silk to a company for insert huge pile of money? No. Um, the the whole the whole point of the silk is so that I can release it. Like the whole reason I went through all the trouble of making it the way that I did was so that I could release it for people to play with. Um, it's going to be released uh, Creative Commons share alike. So if you would like to commercialize it, you're welcome to. Um, because the thing is, I'm not seeing this as like I make this thing and then I make a bunch of money off of it. I don't care. I just want silk to play with. Um, the only reason I'm making this is because I can't just buy it. Like if there were, if on if on Ad Gene there was a plasmid that just made spider silk, I would have bought it already. Like I just want spider silk to play with. So, um, well, thank you, Real Broca. Greatly appreciate it. Um, so you know, I just I just want silk to play with. I don't really want to. Oh, That's a perfect match. Wonderful. Um, okay, sequence ID. Let's see what we get. Yay! Okay, cool. This is actually really helpful. So I think we're gonna go with um, I think we're I think we might go with with RNA interference just because it's easier and just because finding this stupid um, gene is frustrating. Uh, mRNA, 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 complete coding sequence. mRNA, but yeah, this is all mRNA. None, none of this is, is genome RNA. Well, thank you, Leon. Greatly appreciated. Um, why do you need spider silk? Because it's awesome. No, um, the, 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 uh, um, okay, the, the, the real point of the silk, right, is I don't actually, it's not even the silk that I care about per se, um, I just wanted it as part of a bigger project. Um, specifically, the whole the whole reason I want silk is not even for the silk. Like, this part mostly doesn't matter. It's this little tiny fucker on the end here. This little yellow bit is the, is the whole reason that I'm doing the silk thing. Um, the What this will do is it will pull minerals out of solution and turn them into a solid. So the idea is you could grow a giant wad of this spider silk goo that has this little bit on the end and when it touches something like say seawater uh, it will pull minerals out of the solution and turn it into rock so the the silk is really just there to uh, be the binding agent and it's it, because it's very strong it'll hold things together really well it's very stable um, and so it will bind together all of these minerals into a solid brick essentially um, so yeah it's spider bricks it's that's the whole the the point is spider bricks, but also I'm gonna make myself a sweater because I'm gonna have a tank of spider silk. So why the fuck not? Okie dokie. Let's make a new folder. Um, so yes, the literally the whole reason that I'm bashing my face against this project is because I want bricks made out of spider silk. That's it. It's the whole reason. Um, all right. Jesus, I can't spell today. Decaf coffee. Make a mic. Cool. <sighs> All right. We got some mRNA. Very exciting. So what's cool about this, and the the reason that I'm going with RNA interference um, rather than some CRISPR fuckery, um, other than the fact that CRISPR fuckery is hard, is um, what we can do is... So RNA is very picky like it like if anything sticks to it it tends to break um or at the very least it messes with the ability for the cells to actually turn this into protein 
So, so this is the uh, the like RNA exists as a single stranded uh, molecule. Like it's not like DNA where it's the two. It's it's just one. Um, <laughs> yeah. Next video: learning how to sew. No, learning how to knit. Um. Um. So. Because this is meant to be single-stranded, if any other piece of RNA comes by and, like, sticks to some part of it, it'll actually inhibit the ability for the uh, ribosome, which is the thing that turns this into protein, um, to actually work. Because there's literally, a, like, a thing stuck in the mechanism. And more than that, as soon as there's double-stranded RNA, uh, a, a protein called dicer comes by and just cuts it to ribbons. Um, because that's what it recognizes as, like, that's one of the ways that you can target, um, like, a, like an infection. Excuse me. Um, so, like, if you've got, like, a virus, some viruses, some, or, or not, not necessarily just a virus, but if you've got some sort of infection where rogue RNA is being produced in your body, um, one of the very easy ways to, I say easy, one of the, one of the ways to deal with this is you basically make an what's called an antisense RNA. So you basically make something that's the exact opposite, or, or it would be complementary to the sequence that you're trying to target. And what will end up happening is once that once both things are produced in the same cell, they'll stick together. And then another program or program protein recognizes the double stranded RNA as this is garbage, destroy this. Um, and it cuts it to shreds. And so the thing that was supposed to be made never gets made. Um, Um, if you use sodium silicate or TOS, can you make spider glass? I don't know, but I'm very excited to try. There is So there's four different mineralization sequences in the spider thing. Um, one of them does silica, so yes, it should do spider glass. Um, one of them does calcium carbonate. One of them does um, noble metals, like gold. And one of them does um, carbons. Uh, of a ver very specific kind. So basically, it'll it'll stick to things like carbon nanotubes or graphene. Um, I chose all of these so that I can mess with the properties of the end silk. Like I want to, I don't want to make like I don't necessarily want to make silk uh, fabric to be really strong. I really want to make like a plate, like a like a solid plate of silk that ideally is bulletproof. Um, Um, that, that's the whole point. Like, it, like if I, and if I do it with as plates, I don't need to make it into fibers. I literally just like cast it into into a in a mold, um, add the minerals, and just let it solidify essentially. Um, cool. So I've got this wonderful. Um, I wonder if I can if there's an easy way to. Let's go DNA sequence, because then I can just do this that way. And, of course, Chrome is frozen again, because it's Chrome! Um, silica and silicon are not the same thing, just just to be clear. One of those is glass, one of them is a metalloid. They are not the same. What, what, what is going on with the thing? Oh, thank you. Wonderful. Um, okay, topology. We want a linear topology, because this is we're going to make a linear fragment here. Um, we're going to call this... Uh, caffeine synthase mRNA create por favor please and thank you okay good paste to paste wonderful um, cool so this has already actually done the thing that I wanted so you can see here um, it goes M V H M blah 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 um, this is technically RNA so this bottom strand shouldn't even really be here um, normally, um, actually, I'm gonna, you know, I'm, I'm gonna just do one of these, and I'm gonna make a translation, just so you can see what's going on, not that I think it's gonna really add much, but I think it's gonna be interesting to see, nonetheless, um, wow, that failed spectacularly, um, okay, that happened, 
Uh, let's see what that does. See if maybe it'll actually translate now. Um, create forward translation. What the hell? It should just start here. Oh. Oh, I see what happened. I didn't copy this. I'm a turnip. I figured out what's going wrong. Just delete that. Come on. Go away. Delete. Pasty paste. I pasted in the wrong thing because I'm a turnip. Whoops. Yes, I know. I, I realize it doesn't look like mRNA. I was like, I'm looking at it. I'm just like, I'm like something about this doesn't look right. But I couldn't quite. What the fuck? Oh, come on, you had one job. Just copy, paste. Isn't technology fun? Wow, that was frustrating. Cool. Well, we fixed it. Um, that would explain why the translation wasn't working. Now the translation is working. Wonderful. Cool. So really the thing I wanted to highlight was, if you look at the this first codon, right? So, so DNA is, is broken into three letter sections called codons. Each codon codes for a single amino acid in the final protein. So ATG um, always codes for an amino acid called methionine. But if we look on the other side of this, right? So like assuming this is, uh, this is RNA, only this top, only the top part of this would ever actually be produced. This bottom part, should never be produced. Oh, well, somebody, somebody kicked in. Thank you, Alpha Centauri. Thank you very much. And Nico Schluter. Hey, Nico. Good to see you. Um, uh, so Nico asks, how can a bio thingy affect gold? Um, what does an organism need gold for? Um, so there's actually a sizable amount of gold dissolved in the oceans. Um, or in any solution. Um, you, so you could use this. So I'm just using, uh, so it'll do gold or silver. Um, so the reason I put it in there was because um, I, I'm also seeing this as a potential use for uh, bioremediation. So you could like take a gob of the silk and like put it in, or the organism that makes it, whatever, um, and then put it in, say, like a contaminated like mining pond, um, and the silk will accumulate all of the whatever mineral you, or element that you tell it to essentially i just chose gold because then it's it's nice and colorful so it's easy to test um but it'll it'll pull those elements out of the solution and stick it to the silk and then you can just harvest the silk and dispose of it simply because it's just a gob of stuff um but you could also use this to mine the oceans pretty easily um so there's companies that are looking at mining the oceans for something like uranium for example, because there's an enormous quantity of uranium in the oceans. Um, so if you if you added the right sequence, you could mine the oceans for whatever element you want, essentially. This is this is how I'm looking at this. That's why that's there. Um, also, some organisms... Like, I, I got the code from some organism. I don't remember which. Um, but some organisms will do this naturally as a way of getting rid of toxic elements so like if the, some some will do this with i think i want to say nickel um so if there's like a really large amount of dissolved nickel and i, I don't know if nickel's right but point is some some toxic metal they'll just precipitate it as um a solid and then it's it it's not a problem anymore because it's not in solution where it can actually cause damage um yeah like mercury could be great like if you could like hyper accumulate like a mercury oxide um and then co like coat it in silica, that would be great. That would be a really, really simple way of dealing with that problem. Um, so back to the decaf coffee, because that is what we're supposed to be talking about, even though I realize we've kind of gotten entirely sidetracked. Um, anyway, um, so only this top half of this pair would ever actually be synthesized, and it would be synthesized as RNA. Um, it would this this whole gene probably looks very different when it's in its RNA stage or not RNA its DNA stage like when it's still in the genome. Um, it probably and I don't know because I haven't checked. It probably has all kinds of introns and other weird shit that has to get cut out, 
this is just the bit that this is the fi- like the final RNA um, that gets made right before the RNA is translated into protein and the final protein is made. As soon as that protein is made, caffeine starts being synthesized. Um, or the last step in that process starts happening, right? So all we have to do, essentially, is provide some small snippet. It doesn't even need, it doesn't need to be the whole gene. It could actually be a very small part of this um, that will just match the sequence. So essentially, if we just copy the reverse, um, right? So if we, if we copy, so this is the regular sequence, right? And I only highlighted a very small portion of it. Um, if we copy the reverse complement rather than this part, um, and we build a bit of uh, DNA that will produce just this RNA, it doesn't even need to ever actually produce any protein. It just needs to make, and it, I, I don't see an ATG in here. So um, if we just tell it to make this, it will never actually make any new extra weird protein it'll just make rna and then that rna will basically float around until it sticks to this um the original sequence the the caffeine synthase and it should completely gum up the works and prevent caffeine synthase from getting synthesized which i think is really cool there's lots of really cool projects that use this um one of the two of the two of the things that are in the hat that we'll pull at some point um is tearless onions um so like onions that don't make you cry and um uh, Ar- Arctic apples, so like apples that don't brown. And you can do both of these things using RNA r- interference like this, where you basically just turn off one gene um, and it, it gets rid of those properties. So like there's one compound in onions um, and garlic uh, that make you cry when you cut into it. Like that's it. But if you turn off the last step in that synthesis pathway using something like RNA interference like this, it totally gets rid of that and you now have like tearless onions. Um, have you thought about doing GMOs that could benefit third world countries? I'm yes. All, all the time. Um, the problem, the problem with making these GMOs like is really just the regulatory stuff. Like there's huge amounts of regulation that prevents you from like sharing this stuff. Um, so, you know, do with that what you will. Um, I'm going to just look something up really quick. RNA interference um, guidelines. Um, because I want to know, I, I don't actually, I, this is my first time doing RNA, RNA interference. I've never actually done transcriptional silencing like this. So I just want to know um, how large of a thing and like if there's a, if there's a specific, um, and I mean, if you're, anyone in the comments who's, 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 Jesus, I can't words today. Um, anyone uh, who has done RNA interference in the comments, if you want to uh, chime in and, and let me know if there's something that I should be looking for or if there's a slide. Oh, here we go. Interferon on response. Perfect. Found it. Um, in mammalian cell. Oh, wait, that's in mammalian cells. Shit. I don't know how that works in plants. Um, hmm. Interesting. Short interfering. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, so basically there's two different ways to do this, and, and now I'm, I'm getting like like nom flashbacks to biochem 101 um um yeah so there's two ways to do this either you just gum up the works um or you um make it so that it actually cuts the uh mrna that gets made so either yeah so this is this is gum up the works this is actually destroy the rna both should lead to gene silencing. Um, I think this one is... I want to say this one's more efficient, but I'm not entirely sure why or how. Um, 
so, uh, Sam Wison asks, why not chop out the tearless part of the onion instead of using RNA interference? Because chopping something out is much more difficult than just providing a tiny little piece of RNA. Um... Um, but does the compound give flavor to the onion? No. If you, if you just cut off the... And we'll talk about if, this if we ever do the onion episode. Um, but if you just break that last step, it doesn't interfere with the flavor compounds. It just interferes with the crying compounds. Um, uh, Vivek says there are plasmids for that. Search for plant RNA I plasmid. Okay. I'm down. Um, if anyone knows, like, an RNA interference plasmid for plants, that they just feel free to post it in the comments. Save us all some time. Um, um, isn't caffeine used in other biochemical reactions in the plant? I mean, probably, but nothing critical. And, I mean, you're definitely going to have more of a pest problem with a decaf coffee because the whole point of caffeine is actually to keep the bugs from eating it. Um, but, you know, this is all theoretical anyways. I don't actually have any intention of making a decaf coffee plant. Uh, someone says, what is that chrome skin? I need it. I don't know. I've had it for, God, I don't even know, 10 years. Um, it's it's a soul eater skin uh. ah here we go microRNAs in Arabidopsis in rice in Arabidopsis this one says SI which is small interfering Proficient gene silencing in Arabidopsis. Okay, cool. Let's just pick this one, see what it does. Uh, gateway compatible entry vector for direct cloning of artificial microRNAs into Arabidopsis precursor. Let's see what it says. Wow, they rendered that in, like, potato. Um... The promoter on each side to make double-stranded RNA. Also, there are four copies of the caffeine synthase gene in coffee arabica. Um, yeah, there's there's four copies, but if you if you design your RNA right, it should break all of them. Because multiple copies doesn't really matter so long as it's um, like code for code. They're they're basically the same. Um, Okay, let's see what we got here. Um, CMR, um, I don't recognize... I mean, I'm blanking on what that is. Oh, it is chloramphenicol. Okay. And canamycin. Jesus. That is feisty. Um, I'm seeing a Terminator. Um, I don't know. How do, you, how do you use this? I don't know. Um, I'm going to go back. I'm going to see what other what other plasmin options. I mean, yeah, so if you guys think that there's a specific plasmin I should use, please leave them in the comments and save us all some time. Um, I mean, look, all these all these plasmids are released um, as open source, like Creative Commons share alike. So, like, if anyone wants to take these and do something interesting with them, you're more than welcome to do so. Full point. I don't know what any of this means. I don't recognize any of this. This is all. I mean, this is all plant shit. So, like, I don't. This is so outside of my wheelhouse. Like, I'm a I'm a I'm a yeast boy. I like I don't I don't mess with plants. What, empty backbones, no, fluorescent proteins, no, this is not what we want. Uh, 
Uh, what if you added the Superman plant gene to the coffee plant so you can grow it more easily? What? Oh, like the SBPAs thing that we talked about in the in the last stream? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. RNA, come on! Don't make me make this myself. I could just do this in Cambia. That would make my life easier. Um. Hmm. Hmm. Decisions. Decisions. I kind of just want to do, like, P-Cambia and just, like, do this real, real lazy style. Just use the, like, 35S promoter. Just have it run real hard. <laughs> Make a band consisting of biologists, the Yeasty Boys. <laughs> I love it. Amazing. Um... Big stretch. It says highly specific gene silencing by artificial microRNAs in Arabidopsis. Sure, fine, but like, do I have to add my own promoter and stuff? Because that that seems counterproductive. Like, what what makes these plasmids special? I don't understand. during cloning just destroy, destroy it during, that's not helpful yeah it's the same sort of thing I'm not I'm, like I don't see the thing that like I don't see a promoter I don't see a terminator I just see a bunch of like schmo um um so I mean depending on how you design it how does wait? How does how does dicer work? I don't even remember. Dicer is so weird. It's like if you've got a double-stranded DNA, like or not DNA RNA, it like cuts it into pieces and does a whole does a whole thing. PRNAi. Okay. I'm sold. PRNAi. Let's see what we got. Is this it? The wow, that's expensive. I mean, they certainly named it accurately. Mm, pyromycin, pyromycin, hygromycin. This makes literally no difference because I'm not actually going to make this. But you know, huh? This is SV40. I don't know if this will work in plants. Yeah, this this looks human. This does not look... Uh, it doesn't look plant. Let's see. Add gene. Let's see what we got. I mean, the nice thing is, once we've got this plasmid, it'll take approximately four and a half seconds to put together. Um, but, until then... Oh, excuse me. Where is the... plant? Let's just search RNAi. No? Okay. Well, wonderful. Let's just... We're going to just do an add gene search normally, because this is silly. I'm only going to give this another, like, couple of minutes. If I can't find a, a good plasmid, I'm just going to make my own, because this, this is getting ridiculous.
Okay, species. No, don't want a dog. Synthetic. Some other random nonsense. Why is plant not an option? What the fuck? Rat, mouse, person, fly, dog, worm. An enemy. Bunch of other shit. That's not helpful. Um, the, uh, cauliflower mosaic virus promoter is pretty aggressive. It works in most plants, as far as I know. Um, I right, screw this. We're using P-Cambia. I'm over it. Do I already have this in the tomato thing? Because if I already have this in the tomato one, that would be very easy. Very much better. Um, which just occurred to me that I have not uploaded that to the GitHub. Which, by the way, for those of you who um, um, have been asking or wondering, all of these plasmids are available on GitHub. Um, so if you want to download them, play with them, do, do things with them, you know, hang them on your wall, whatever, um, that is the best way to do that. Okay, spicy tomato. Do I have an empty P. cambia in here? No. Because of course I don't. Fuck it, we're gonna use this. We're gonna just... We're gonna just make my life nice and easy, and we're gonna just copy this and call it a day. And then we'll be done. This will be great. Okie dokie. Decaf coffee. Copy, copy. Uh, links to the GitHub are in the description under the video. Should be copied. Okay, decaf coffee. I found the thing. All right, cool. This is the thing I want. I'm gonna just close everything else because it's all crap that I don't need right now. Um, B cat. Okay, cool. This is the this is the part that we want. So we've got our 35S promoter, which is what we want. Um, and the polyay thing. Um, so I'm gonna just, so this, this plasmid uh, we made uh, a couple episodes ago. Um, and so this one, if you were to put it into tomatoes, would make um, spicy, spicy tomatoes. So it would turn on capsaicin synthase in, uh, in tomatoes, which I, th which I think would be very fun. Um, but we're gonna just cut all that out. Bye bye. What is this? Why are there? Oh, that's the stop code on. Okay, cool. Um, um, okay, I'm seeing some. I'm seeing some questions. So, um, are there any software recommendations for working with plasmids? Benchling. That's why I'm using it. Um, are plasmids under copyright or, or patent? Can you make a plasmid and put it under some sort of public domain where anybody else can claim it, but or can't claim it, but anyone can use it for whatever? Um, that's basically what AdGene is. Um, and also the whole point of me posting things on GitHub is for exactly that reason. It's it's proof of publicity, basically. Um, Okay, nothing, nothing interesting. Um, okay, so this should be ready to go, and now we should just be able to go here. Um, so it said thirty nucleotides was the standard for um, mammalian cells, so I'm gonna just use that as the same standard now, because. I have nothing... Oh, wow. 30 is really small. I'm going to just pick a random spot, basically. I'm going to pick 
pick right at the beginning. So it really it clogs. I wanted to basically like clog up. The, I wanted to like clog up the works right at the beginning so that it nothing nothing ever gets uh, made essentially. So we're gonna just. I mean, this should be this should be dead easy. This should literally just be copy paste call today. Reverse complement. Copy. Um. So I should just be able to paste that in. Assuming that it fucking cooperates. Wonderful. That's been pasted. Um, now we're going to create our annotation. Um, uh, cool. And we're done. <laughs> um, yeah. That, I mean, that's actually basically dead easy, but I don't, I don't know, um, I feel like I'm missing something, I like that I've, I've recommended the manga guide to molecular biology so many times that, like, y'all know to recommend that for me, so thank you, um, So you want to you want to remove the spiciness from peppers, but add it to tomatoes. Personally, I don't really want a spicy tomato. I just I pulled it out like we, we that was one of those I pulled out of the hat. So I'd I, I'd make it just you know because I said I'd make it, but I don't personally want spicy tomatoes overly. Uh, hairpin. Vivek says hairpin. So like. Oh, okay, I, I see what you mean. Um, should I just... Hmm, should I just copy the reverse? Or how should I go about that? Ugh. Vivek seems to know what he's doing, so I'm going to just... Or they know what they're doing, so I'm going to just uh, wait on their response. Because apparently I need a hairpin. Um, let's see if we got anything, uh, anything good here. Oh, God, I'm starting to yawn. Like, I feel like I just woke up. How am I already exhausted? It's been kind of a weird day. I'm seeing all kinds of stuff. Because I don't know if it needs to target like a specific area or... Targets should be located 50 to 100 nucleotides downstream of the start codon. Oh, actually, that's really helpful. That means I need to undo this and I totally targeted the wrong area. So we're gonna turn this off. We're annotations off. We'll just delete that. Oh come on, really? Will it undo? It does. Yay! Wonderful. Okay. So it wants fifty to one hundred nucleotides. So I actually have to. I I started way too close to the front. Um, so we're gonna go one hundred because why not? Uh, although I mean. Uh, Do, 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 do. We only need 30. Start D. Copy. Um, okay, so Vivek says, reverse complement on both sides and in middle some random gibberish. How big should the middle be? Are we talking like five nucleotides? And when you say reverse complement, do I need to reverse this um, sequence? So it's like, so reverse complement of the RNA some gibberish and then do I just flip the reverse complement again and so or do I go with the original RNA
So yeah, some some guidance there would be good. Um, I've got my new piece, so we're gonna. Oh wait, wrong thing. Copy the wrong half. Copy the reverse complement, please. Thank you. Um. What happened? Cool. So I should be able to just. Whoops. Paste. Um, and then you said some, some random gibberish, so we're going to go GCT, GCA. Just some random gibberish. Oh, okay, Vivek is looking it up. Thank you. Um, I'm going to annotate that as middle. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm waiting for Vivek. He's, he, they're looking it up. Um, so we can... Figure this out, and we can figure out what's going on. Annotate. Cool. Uh, random. Uh, Nice, nice, concise title that just rolls off the tongue. Random middle base pair, or random base pair middle of hairpin. Um, okay, so this should be the targeting part of the RNA. Um, let's annotate it. What else? Um, I'm also gonna I'm gonna recolor that because it's sort of an ugly color. I mean it's gray. I could do with let's go with pink. Why not? Hot pink. I like it. Um, okay, so David, so so I realize I've just been kind of muttering and going off of what Vivek has been saying. But so so while I'm waiting for Vivek to look this up, uh, let me let me explain what's going on here. So basically, the the name of the game here is this the bit that I've got highlighted right now is the thing that will actually target the caffeine synthase gene. However, apparently we need to make it as a hairpin. So what this means is um, essentially you have the opposite, like so the complement of this. Um, basically what we're going for is you essentially double the, the length of the um, piece of RNA and you've got some like random gib gibberish in between, which is what this is. Um, the, the goal being to have the single piece of RNA bend back on itself. So basically the two halves stick together, um, into what looks like a, like a hairpin. That's why it's called a hairpin. Um, and I believe this is, um, something to do with the way that small interfering RNA works, uh, where, um, that's, that's just required. I, I assume this has to do with Dicer, um, which is a protein that will take those double-stranded RNAs um, and cut them so that you've only got the the, uh, the the bits that are sticking together are the only thing that make it. I think it cuts the, the, the loopy part of the hairpin off, um, and then that kind of primes the RNA and gets it ready to be interfering, essentially. Yeah, it's it's where the ends bind and the bind in the middle doesn't. So this random bit of schmoo here um, is that middle part. Um, this is this section that would bind, and I assume, oh, man, how would I? I would need to. I would need to reverse those. That's very strange. Um, okay, let's see if I can. Um, I'm gonna copy the reverse of this. And I want to see if I can reverse it. Flip your text. It's funny, like I mean, people keep mentioning the the XKCD thing. Um, this, 
uh, how, you know, doing biology is essentially just doing stuff in a text editor. Um, and yeah, that's basically what bio is. Um, so this should have flipped that sufficiently. So we should be able to just paste that in. Um, I'm going to go back to here and I'm going to read what Vivek says because Vivek has been a fountain of knowledge today. It's been great. Um, so it says, transcribe a hairpin structure consisting of a 19 base pair sequence from the target transcript, a spacer of nine base pairs of random sequence for the hairpin loop, followed by the reverse complement of the original. Flipped around, I assume. Um, really, just 19 base pairs. That's interesting and also weird. Um, so this is 30, so that means we only actually need the first... Well, I'm going to just do this. I'm going to go from here. I'm going to go from the back. Um, so we only need 19. Man, that's really tiny. This would cost essentially nothing to make. Just to be clear. Like, if we were going to have this made, like, this would cost essentially nothing to have made. Um, so that means I can... I should be able to get rid of this. Just go delete. Um, this needs more, because there's only 7 here. So I'm going to... Oh, oh god. Benchling did not like that. Um... Um, so just to count, we got, it should be seven. Yeah, seven. So I need to add two more, so we're going to go that. Cool. So now we've got a nine, uh, base pair hairpin. Reverse and complementary, com complementary both. Cool. Well, I've already got that. So pasty paste. Um, and so then, because we are only doing 19, it just means I grab the first 19 from this, and then cut off the end. So that should be it. And then this should be deleted. Delete. Great, perfect. Um, and now this needs to be annotated. Create annotation. Uh, reverse. Oop. Compliment. Hairpin. Um, so it should, it should be long enough to be unique to the genome. I have no idea if this is unique. I don't know if I feel like checking, I'll be honest. Um, <laughs> Canada confuses me. What, what's confusing about Canada? We're just the best. Um, okay, so I should be able to turn the annotations off. Wow, this is such a tiny... I mean, compared to some of the other pieces that we've had made, like, this is teeny tiny. Um, in fact, I am curious. Again, not that I ever actually want to make this. Oh, excuse me. This is tiny. Oh, no, wait, that didn't, that didn't highlight properly. 575. Okay, so if you were to make this entire construct, because, like, the P. Cambia includes basically everything from here all the way around to, like, here. So only only this tiny little piece needs to actually be synthesized. It's about 570 base pairs. You could totally have this synthesized for, like, 200, 250 bucks tops. Maybe 300, depend if you're adding in, like, some other-ish. And, like, they'd, they'd send this to you, and you could totally make decaf coffee. Like, easy peasy. Um, the, the, the one problem though is you'd have to put it into the, into the coffee plant, grow the coffee plant, get it all the way to the point of fruiting, test the fruit, see if it's making caffeine, which, uh, it's a little bit of work. It's a little bit of work. Yeah, Canada's like the U.S., but not insane. Or on fire. Um, I mean, growing coffee in Canada sounds like a big feat, but you could totally do it in a greenhouse. Be fine. I mean, you need to heat the greenhouse, but be fine. Um, yeah. Cool. So, that looks like we've got the thing. Um, hey, Vivek, is there anything else that we need to do to this, or is this it? Is it just promoter, hairpin, polyay? Or is there some other ish that I need to add to this. Like, this this feels too easy. Which is kind of why I'm glad that we picked it, because it's already 4 o'clock, and it's been a two-hour stream, and this part only took, like, four seconds. Ugh.
secret off. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Um, so while I'm waiting for uh, an answer, I mean that's the other thing. Like then once you've got this, like then you could go in, you could do like cold resistance or whatever. Like I mean if you just did. Uh, like, if you throttled SBPAs, which is what, um, Gabriel was talking about on the last stream, like, you could... Terminator? I got the Terminator. There's a Terminator in there. It's right here. It's right here. It's this. Yeah, promoter, hairpin, Terminator. Easy peasy, right? Um, so, the other, the other thing, though, is if you were, um gonna do this, like, if this is something that you... And, and, I mean, this is, this is... Kind of interesting. So if you were going to try and do this, right? Like you, you want to try and make some uh, decaf coffee beans. Rather than waiting four years for the plant to mature, you can just do it in cell culture. So there's ways of inducing f both fruiting and flowering and all that kind of stuff in, in tissue culture. Um, in fact, um, I'm going to see if I can pull up an Im image. Uh, plant, tissue, culture, fruiting, tomato. Um, I definitely spelt some of that wrong, so it's going to yell at me, but it should still get me close enough. Vivek says done. That that means we're done. <laughs> cool. Um, see, adding caffeine to something else is much more difficult than just turning caffeine off. Um, so I'm trying to see if I can find... Um, Because there's this really great and adorable picture of um, basically making tomatoes fruit in cell culture. So it's this like it's literally a tomato plant this big um, that they've like forced to flower, um, and it also made fruit. Metro uh, flower tomato. Um, couldn't you just breed caffeination out? Sure, if you've got 25 years. That's This is why breeding is stupid. It's not stupid. It's it's slow. And I don't have time for that shit. Whereas, like, you just go into it. So this is this is basically what I was thinking. Where, like, you see this tiny-ass tomato plant? This tomato plant is this big. It's got, like, three leaves on it. Um, but if you give it the right hormones... Like, plants are just hormone distributions over time and space. To steal a line from my friend Sebastian. Um... So if you give it the right hormones, it will fruit. It will flower. It will do the thing. Um, so it's a tiny tomato. Isn't it cute? It's so tiny. I mean, here's another one. Somebody did. Um, super tiny. Like, you got to figure, this test, that, t that test tube is this big. So, like, that tomato has got to be yay big. Teeny, 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 tiny. Um, but, you know, you could do this with coffee beans in theory. It'd fucking take you probably three years to get this working properly um but um if you if you grew the coffee plants in cell culture which you'd have to anyway for the modification um you, you could induce flowering and fruiting and then just test the test the tiny little beans that you get and see if they're full of caffeine um Somebody, somebody is asking, um, have I, have I looked into the research, um, oh, somebody, somebody donated, I totally missed that, oh, wow, dude, thank you, Alex, greatly, greatly appreciate it, I just saw that go by, I'm so sorry I didn't, uh, address that sooner, um, is the stream frozen? Let me see if my internet died, no, my internet's fine. Um, I mean, making a, making a thing never flower is hard, truly, like, that's really, really hard, um, I mean, making it sterile is different, um, there's ways to do that, oh, good, the stream is back, okay, great, 
Yeah, it was just it was like it was frozen in my little in my little live dashboard, which is what I was looking to off on, on the, the side. Um, I'm glad it's still working. Anyway, that's weird. Eh, internet man, it's weird. Um, uh, no Hox jeans. We don't we don't mess with Hox jeans. Hox jeans are too hard and they're too weird. Um. What was I saying? Oh yeah, so you you know you could grow the you grow tiny coffee beans in cell culture and then test and see if that works and that would be fine. Um, but it looks like we're done. Like I we've got our our little hairpin thing. We've got our bit of random nonsense reverse hairpin targeting bit promoter thing. So yeah, in theory, if you were to put this into a coffee bean plant, so so just to since um since we're since we're talking about this, um the way that you do this, um. If you actually, if you actually wanted to uh, do this, like you wanted to make your weird decaf coffee plant thing, um, the first step in that process is growing the plant in cell culture. So uh, you can see some some examples on the screen already. Here's here's some proper examples, which is more what I wanted to show. So basically, what you're doing, and I'm going to do a video on this. What? Uh, 35S promoter may result in stunted growth, seed specific, I, I don't care. <laughs> so we're not going to make it. Like, if somebody cares, they can replace it. Um, anyway, so if you're, if you're going to do this, this is the, this step is basically the first part of the, this process. So what you do is you take a tiny little piece of leaf, and you got to sterilize the leaf first. Um, and then you put it on these special Petri dishes with media in them that contains hormones. Um, and the hormones basically turn that like force the plant to turn into like this weird booger looking thing um called a callus um here's a really nice shutterstock image um it's nice here's a nice one it really it looks like a booger like this is why i call it a plant booger other than the fact that i find it entertaining it's a plant booger um so once you've got it in in like plant booger stage um then you basically literally like pick the thing up stick it onto a different bit of media uh, with different hormone concentrations, and you can basically force it to make shoots and then roots, um, so that you can do something like this. So you've got tiny little baby plant with shoots and roots in a tiny little bit of cell culture, um, and from there, like while it's in plant booger stage, is when you actually do the modification. Um, then once it's modified, you let it grow into into whole plant, and then you can actually test it. So in this case, you would want to get it to this like little baby plant stage. Uh, and then induce flowering. So you could either do that in cell culture, or you could transfer it to a little pot like this, um, and then just hit it with huge amounts of gibberellic acid, um, and it'll flower. Um, I was actually spraying my, uh, I mean, my, my, I, so I bought the wrong kind of nasturtiums. And so for uh, people who don't know what a, oh, Jesus. Uh, for people who don't know what a nasturtium is, um, they're these really beautiful flowers. I love these. They're they um, they're an edible flower variety. Um, they're very pretty, um, and they they te they taste spicy. Like they're spicy flowers. They're they're fantastic. I love them. Um, unfortunately, I bought the extra gigantic climbing variety, which is not what I wanted. Um, so it's just making lots of foliage and no flowers. Whereas I wanted the tiny little like dwarf variety that makes. Not so much foliage and lots and lots of flowers. So in an attempt to make them flower, I was spraying them with um, a gibberellic acid solution. Um, and it was starting to work, but eventually I was like, you know what, fuck this. And I just I th basically killed all the plants, and I'm just going to replace them with a variety that isn't stupid. Um, because they were also huge, and they were taking up space, and I'm just like, I wasn't into it. Um, so I'm going to get... So, yeah, I, I, was, I was growing this really tall variety, um, but I really want one that's more like this where it's just it's small and it's you know self-contained in a nice little pot rather than something like this which is you know going to climb up the whole wall and do a whole thing um i love nasturtiums though um they are so pretty and it's it's the little it's the totoro leaves it's the tiny little totoro leaves that i just i love them so much they're just so cute um 
and um, I don't know. I don't know if you could ferment it. It's it's spicy, but I don't know what makes nasturtiums spicy. Um, the uh, the leaves also taste very, very peppery, so it's it's good. I mean, they're nice in a salad. I make really dope, um, like spicy black pepper buns, um, and I I put um, like sliced green onion and nasturtium leaves in them, and it's it's really really quite nice. Um, uh, yeah, people are talking about as a as a cannabis grower. This would be very interesting. Yeah, growing growing uh, cannabis in cell culture is difficult um growing something like a like mint or basil or tobacco or whatever um in cell culture is very very easy it the the hormones are cheap and available and that's that's all fine and well but for cannabis it's very picky and so it needs weird specific hormones like it's not impossible it's not even necessarily that difficult it's just it needs a very specific hormone concentration of a weird hormone that isn't normally used for a lot of other plants. Um, but it is doable. I know I somebody on Instagram who follows me is doing cannabis cell culture stuff. And, like, so I've seen pictures of, like, it, it working just fine. It's just weird. It's very, very weird. But, like, um, it's also good for, like, like in vitro cell culture. Um, uh, plant. Um... One of the other, one of the other really useful things about this is once you've got the plant in like booger stage, uh, so like you can get a plant into plant booger stage from literally a tiny piece of leaf. So as long as you've got one leaf, you could make potentially twelve more plants from it. I mean, it depends on the size of the leaf, obviously. Um, but you basically you make the leaf into little plant booger, um, of which I don't see a yeah here. Um, so you know you take your little piece of leaf, you make it into this weird like. Shoggoth plant booger monstrosity thing. Um, and then you can grow it into an entire plant, and it's a way of basically taking one plant that you like and making 10,000 of the same plant. I mean, 10,000 is a lot, but, you know, you could. Um, and so it's, it's another way of cloning plants for, like, if you've got a, a plant that you really like, um, or if you've got, like, a really rare plant that maybe doesn't... Um, like, put out seeds very often. Like, maybe you've got a plant that only puts out seed every, like, six years or something ridiculous. Um, you can use this to make more plant without having to wait for it to, like, go through its whole cycle. So it is quite helpful. Yeah, most tedious part in cell cult in callus culture is acclimatization to soil. Yeah, I've got a... I've, you know what? Hold that thought. I will be right back. I'm going to grab a thing. I just realized I actually have a plant in cell culture that I can just show you. Um, so I'm going to set this to camera only so that you can actually see this well. Um, so this is a plant in cell culture. Um, it's it's a little steamy because it's it's growing. Um, this is a, a coconut scented geranium. Um, when I, it's it's naturally like this. Like I didn't do anything weird to it. I was just trying to grow this in cell culture. Um, and it's, isn't it cool? It like it looks like straight out of a movie. Like I love this. It's so it's so neat looking. Um, but yeah, it's a little it's a little baby plant. Um, so in theory, I should be able to just and you can see it's growing on like clear media, which I think is really cool. Um, so the the reason I have this growing in cell culture like this, is, and this started from a seed. Like this started from sterile seeds. Um, this is coconut scented. Um, geraniums come in a huge range of scents. So the, the trichomes, the little hairs on the outside of the uh, plant, um, produce a huge combination of chemicals that give it its, like, coconut flavor. Um, the more common variety of this is lemon-scented. So I, I basically wondered, like, what happened... So there's this process called protoplast fusion, where you basically take plant cells, like, you get them growing in cell culture... Um, or you can start with a leaf, I think. I don't, I don't think it needs to be growing in cell culture. It's just, it needs to be sterile, which is why you typically do it in cell culture. Um, so you basically take these two, two different plants. They have to be in the same family, but they don't need to be the same species 
at all. Um, and you dissolve away the cell wall um, and all of the like stuff. And in, so I'm gonna I'm gonna switch this back to uh, screen mode so I can actually show you a picture of this. Um, So basically what you do is you you go from like you know the usual like square-ish cells to protoplasts um, when you dissolve away the cell wall which is basically like pure cell. Um, there's no protective covering on it. It's just plasma membrane and like cell goods on the inside. And it looks like the it's little little balls. It's like little little balls of cell which like it looks you know kind of what you'd expect a cell to look like. Um, so then what you can do is you basically do this to both kinds of plants that you want to fuse. Um, and you take, you literally like take both plants, um, and you put them, like you take both, both vials of protoplast and you mix them. And then you either add a small amount of polyethylene glycol, or you can use electroporation. And it basically takes these weird spheres of plant from different species and they go like, bloop, into one really big plant cell. Um, so I'll see if I can find you a picture of this. Um, so what I wanted to do was I wanted to do this with my coconut scented geranium and lemon scented geranium, and then put them together because the amount of biochemistry that it takes to make coconut or lemon scent is quite significant. So I figure if you mix those two, the machinery should maybe overlap and maybe you get like a weird new product um that is some combination of the two um and so you it you can then take that 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 merged like that fused protoplast and from that single cell grow it into an entire new plant um and the reason that i chose geraniums for this other than the fact that that weird biochemistry sounds interesting um was because geraniums the leaves are scented whereas uh, if I wanted to do this with like a flowering plant, I'd have to wait for flowers to see if something weird happened. Um, uh, I'm going to look up um, Brassica. Um, so people have done this with all sorts of different plants. Um, and you can even do this with plants that are very, very distantly, un like not related at all, like not in the same family. They just won't produce a functional plant um, because they're too different. But if you stick to like within the same thing you could get really weird um was it broccoli or was it cauliflower yeah it was cauliflower cauliflower so somebody so some group did this with cauliflower <laughs> and so they took like i think a wild mustard and cauliflower and they just like schmooed them and you get all these like super weird varieties of the same thing and it's just, it's very strange very 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 strange um so this is this is basically a way of making new interesting species um just without having to do it. like this is not this doesn't count as genetic modification. You can do this and then immediately sell the plant. Like there's no rules against selling it because it's not genetic modification. Even though you fucking took two plants that are not related and schmooed them into one plant, but that doesn't count as GMO for some fucking reason. Um anyway, um, <laughs> everything on a cob. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's protoplast fusion. That's the reason I have the geraniums. Um, so with the, with the geraniums, you should be able to tell almost immediately just by like sampling one of the leaves, if something new and weird has happened. Whereas if it was some other species, you'd either have to wait for like the cauliflower to grow to see if you've got like weird morphology or see if, like, a flower looks different or something. Whereas geranium is, is much faster, which is why I chose it. Um, so I've got the coconut. I'm going to get lemon going in the same stuff. Um, and then we should just be able to, like, we should just be able to fuse them. I say should. It's an extremely difficult process that you need to get basically perfect, and you have to have all the enzymes, and it's a bio project, so inevitably it's going to fail. But I am nothing if not optimistic. So... I think it'd be a lot of fun. It's it's one of those like slow burn projects that I've been actually been working on for a really long time. Um, I just don't really talk about it because there hasn't been any interesting progress. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna do some protoplast fusion at some point. Um, and yes, the plants can be fertile. Um, and if they're not, there's a. It's usually because of a chromosome mismatch. Um, so like one of the plants had 
one too few chromosomes. So when you when you smooth them together, there's like an odd number of chromosomes. So it doesn't divide properly. So what you can plants are really weird. Like they don't care how many chromosomes they have or how many copies of chromosomes they have. And this is kind of helpful. So what you can do if you've got a sterile plant that isn't making seeds properly because of a weird chromosome mis mismatch, there's a chemical that you can apply to them that doubles the amount of chromosomes. So if, so if you think about it, if you've got an odd number of chromosomes and you multiply it by two, by definition, you have an even number of chromosomes and then it just like breeds properly. Um, so yeah, you can, uh, that's a, that's a thing. That's totally a thing. And I really, I want to try all of this. It sounds so cool. It's just really hard. <laughs> Um, what do you need to schmoo plants together? A, a lot of materials, mostly. A lot of enzymes, and some, like, some peg, and hormones, and media. Time. It's mostly, it's mostly time, and reagents. I should have most of the reagents at this point, though. Um, yeah, yeah, it's corn on a cob on a cob. Don't worry, it's non-GMO. I like it. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can also do haploid culture. This is the thing. But yeah, so uh, that's that's that. We've. Huh, I think I think we're gonna we're gonna start on the wrap up because we've been going for two and a half hours, and as as is usually the case, we're nearing the end of the stream because I am getting hungry, and also I have a call soon, so. Um, I'm, uh, as, as always, the, the plasmid is going to be uploaded to the GitHub. Um, I've been working on uploading all the stuff to the GitHub. I'm still, I just realized I'm still missing, uh, two, yeah, I think two of the constructs that we, we made. So those will be uploaded hopefully today. Um, the stuff from, that we talked about with Gabriel in the last stream has been uploaded, so if you were interested in the Ents project or the Bees project, that's available now as well. Um, I put a couple links to papers, I didn't put nearly as many as I would have liked, just because there's a lot of them, um, but if you start with the papers that are linked, you should be able to, like, just search from there and find other good papers. Um... Uh, oh, also, speaking of, of Gabe, um, I haven't figured out the schedule for this yet, but I'm, I'm either going to be adding um, a third streaming day per week, or one of the streaming days is going to be uh, a, a more regular hangout with, with Gabriel, um, because people seem to really enjoy our chat, so it's, it's basically going to be more like this, where we're just kind of, you know, shooting the shit and just talking about weird bio things, and I think it'll be fun. I think it'll, I think it'll be a lot of fun. Um... Again, I haven't decided if I want to add a third streaming day or if I just want to use one of the two streaming days for that. I will keep you all posted as I figure these things out. Um, um, but yeah. Um, so I'm going to do like like two or three minutes, just really, really brief, um, of some question time, and then we're going to wrap it up for the day because we've been going for a while. Um, for everybody who's already donated for the Silk fundraiser, thank you so much. Um, I'm going to try and get that in, um, as, as soon as I can. Basically, once we, once we hit the goal, I'm going to put in the order. Um, it won't, it won't happen super, super fast because the egg plasmid needs to be made first and I'm still waiting on the plasmid to arrive from AdGene and then that's got to get shipped to the company and they've got to do the work on it. So it's like, it's bio shit. So it's going to take a little bit of time. Um, so it's just sort of the way this, these things go. Um, bio projects are just sort of inherently slow. Um, so like for the, the people who donated to the milk and eggs thing, like it's happening. It's just slow. Um, the order has been put in, so it, it'll probably take two or three months. Um, it's just the way it is. Um, and once again, the thing is lagging. That's exciting. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to just switch this to camera mode so that I can, oh man, car Jesus put in 20 bucks. Thank you very much. Greatly appreciated. Thank you. Oh, also, I hope you guys have, have noticed, I've, I've added some, uh, some, like, custom little animation thingies, like, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to make the stream nicer and, and more enjoyable for everybody, um, and, you know, just a little more, a little, little more personalized, so I, I added custom, uh, stickers, like, little, little gifts for when people donate or become members or all that kind of stuff, 
So hopefully that's something that you guys have been enjoying. A little more, a few more graphics, you know, bits and bobs just to make things nice. Um, also, you'll notice the this new where's my thing? This this new lighting here. Um, there's this is actually going to be shelving. Um, there's it's going to be a three tier shelf, um, and then those lights are going to be mounted so I can grow plants. For those who've been wondering. Um, uh, could you put weed and hops together? Actually, yes, they're in the same family. You could make weed hops. It would be weird, but also there would probably be a gigantic market for it. So, shrug, go for it. Um, uh, uh, since you won't say the gene synthesis service that you use, do you have any other recommendations? Where uh, you can have them splice it into an ad gene backbone? Um, so there's a couple different companies that'll do this. Um, I believe uh, GeneScript is pretty good. They'll, they'll do all kinds of stuff for you. Um, if you're just looking for subcloning, which is what the term describes uh, taking pieces out of one plasmid and putting it into another, um, there's a company called BioBasic, which is pretty good. Um, yeah, I, so yeah, GeneScript, um, BioBasic, but I mean, even even like Twist. Like, I don't, I don't particularly like Twist, um, but I have lots of friends who use them, and they're relatively fast and based in the U.S., so, like, if that's your thing, they'll send you no problem. Um, so, yeah, those are, those are my recommendations. Um, what mediates the differences in expression of different promoters? I have no idea. Promoters are weird. This is... You got to keep in mind that like nobody really knows what's going on when it comes to a lot of biology. Like we know shit works, we just don't know why. Nor nor do we particularly care. So like there'll be studies where they'll they'll like we don't look at a uh, wow that was an awkward place for that to freeze. Is everything just frozen oh good it unfroze thank you wonderful um well thank you Ms. mark greatly appreciate it um uh, oh yeah so uh promoters um so yeah w like they'll be they'll do studies where they'll like chop bits of promoters off to see at what at which point they either stop working or start working really well but we don't really know why they work. Like, that's kind of beyond the scope of what most biologists do. Like, we know that promoters work and that certain promoters do certain things. And we can, like, cut promoters off of genes that we know express only in certain locations and then check and see if that, you know, makes that happen. Um, but, like, the actual nitty-gritty of, like, why promoters do the thing they do? Shrug. I have no idea. It's weird. Um, th uh, so Mr. Mark asks, uh, what cheese dishes have you discovered you love after becoming lactose tolerant? I mean, I love cheese dishes before being lactose intolerant or be before being lactose tolerant. They just hurt. <laughs> um, um, I don't know. I, 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 I like most cheese dishes. I like cheese. I like pizza. Pizza's delicious. Um, yeah, and uh, Dutchick says it's kind of pointless to know exactly how it works if it does. If it does, and won't, and you won't change it anyway. Yeah, it's true. It's the same way that like, um, I, I I answered Mizu Mark's question and thank you very much for the donation. I I like all cheese dishes. Um, stroganoff is is particularly nice. Um, I made a I made a really nice quiche. Had a lot of cheese and it was really good. Um, um, is the Ents Project Plasmid usable with Agrobacterium or Gene Guns? Yes, it is. Uh, been loaded into agrobacterium. That's how Gabe's getting it into plants. Totally.
We got audio again? Okay, I fixed it. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I thought I'd had my, my mic plugged in and charging. I did not, because I'm a turnip. Sorry. Um, I, I don't know how, how long it's been. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> shit. Man, this, this whole stream has just not been going my way. <laughs> It's just been just one one clusterfuck after the other. Um, yeah, is, is it all is it all fixed now? <laughs> it's the cheese that has cursed the stream. Okay, good. I'm glad we're back. Um, yeah, I'm sorry this is frustrating. It's just as frustrating for me. I don't know why this is broken. Um, basically, after this, I'm going to call my internet company again and be like, hey, why is my internet shit? I pay you lots of money, so my internet isn't shit. Because, um, yeah, I mean, I'd, like, I want to be doing these streams, but I also don't want them to be crap. So, um, yeah, I shrug. Anyway, um, I, so I think I've, I've answered enough questions, and we've gone on enough tangents for the day. Um you know, again, thanks to thanks to everybody who's who's kicked in for the uh, thing, um, and for the the spider silk. It's really going to make my life a lot easier. And then we're going to be much we'll be at the spider silk like completion point much faster. Um. Um. I know the video is still very laggy. Um. I think I'm going to basically wrap it up at this point. Um. There's, I mean, we've we've covered everything. Um, uh, Dex, uh, just one one quick thing, just because apparently Dexter has asked and I've missed it. Um, uh, have you seen the study that uh, COVID inactivates quicker in higher temp sunlight exposed and high humidity? Um, I haven't seen that one specifically, um, but I'm very careful when it comes to going outside. Like, I, I wear a full, like, respirator, and I don't wear gloves because gloves are stupid. Just wash your hands and don't touch your face. Um, like, I, I see people wearing the same pair of gloves and then, like, fondling their mask and, like, doing all kinds of just stupid shit. I had to, I had to uh, give a, a clerk at one of the stores I went to shit for wearing a mask over just their mouth. I'm like, you know that doesn't work if you just wear it over your mouth, right? Like, it's got to... It's got to come out... It's got to gotta cover all the air holes <laughs> and like um yeah so i'm gonna not talk about that because i'm mostly angry and frustrated with how stupid people are when it comes to like personal safety and it's very frustrating um so yeah anyway uh oh uh, vivek asks update on the neuron cultures there's not gonna be an update until the pandemic is over basically um, ben on Applied Science is working on making the base plates for the, the neuron things, but I can't actually use any of them until the pandemic is over, and I can go fly and hang out with Gabriel and use his lab for actually growing them. So, yeah, there's not going to be a neuron update for a really long time, probably. Um, I'd been planning on doing it in July, but the world is on fire, so it's not happening, unfortunately. Um... Hopefully an N95 mask. Yes, I'm wearing, like, the respirator has two big N95 pods on it. I've got a whole stack of things, and I'm, like, sterilizing my, my filters every couple of days. It's, it's a thing. I'm, I'm a hyper-paranoid hypochondriac biologist. I'm kind of on top of it when it comes to a pandemic. Who'd have thought? Um, yeah, <laughs> so that's a thing. Um, but anyways, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap this up. I'm hungry. i got a call in 20 minutes, so... Got to put some food in my face and get on with my day. I hope all of you have enjoyed. the. There's links to everything in the description. Thank you, everybody, who's donated and helped out. This has been a lot of fun. Um, the next stream will be on Friday. Same bat time, same bat channel, 2 p.m. Eastern. Um, and we'll be doing maybe another Who's Gene, maybe some live lab work. It kind of depends how I'm feeling and, and if I can get this camera thing sorted out. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's, this is going to be good. Um, again, I hope you guys have enjoyed. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy. Try not to go too stir crazy. Um, oh shit. <sighs> Fucking. Thank you, Nico. Okay, just really quick, just because I, I want to answer Nico's question because Nico is dope. 
Uh, stupid question, can human diseases mess with human cell cultures? Absolutely. Like, viral contamination in uh, um, cell culture is like a legitimate, massive problem. Um, anyway, 